Hi everyone and welcome back to the Sacred Womb podcast. Today I'm talking to Rachel of moontimes.co.uk. Rachel is founder and owner and she produces wonderful cloth menstrual pads and sells all associated products to help us have an awesome bleed. So Rachel, welcome back to the podcast. Thanks so much for taking the time to come and talk to us again. Thanks, Melanie. It's lovely to chat to you. And uh, yeah, today we've got an interesting topic in the form of uh, a question that came your way. So we're going to discuss that because it's it's a really important one. Yeah, great. Okay, let's get straight to it then. (laughs) Okay, so you got a question in and it went, after being a Happy Moon Cup user, I recently tried cloth pads for the first time. However, at the end of the day, I felt quite itchy and wondered if I had an infection. Could it be that pads stop airflow and encourage bacteria growth, resulting in infections? Wow. It's First of all, it's a lot, and I feel sorry for her because it's not nice having yeast infections or whatever infection it what if it was that. Yeah. Um, but let's just blow all that out of the water because cloth pads are breathable soft comfortable shouldn't cause any itching and discomfort so the first thing i would ask her is what is she using to wash them in yeah it could be a washing powder was she wearing tights tight jeans could have been something else like that going on um yeast if it's a yeast infection that's usually to do with diet and too much sugar yeah. and obviously things like disposable pads are awful for that kind of thing because they're all plastic and really make you sweaty but Mm -hmm. cloth pads are so breathable because they're cloth (laughs) that's the whole point of them they're the same as knickers though it's just like a thicker knickers exactly it's no different from wearing your knickers you wouldn't get a bacterial infection from your knickers unless you're wearing polyester or nylon knickers (laughs) which some people do yeah Um, but one of the things I really pride Moon Times on is that all our pads, got some here, look, are uh, organic, super soft organic cloth. Yeah. Some people do make pads from minky. Have you heard of minky? What's this kind that? of it's it's like that um, fake fur that you get. You can get blankets made out of it. You know, oh. super soft and furry, but it is plastic ultimately. It's yeah. made out of. It's like um, fleece. It's made out of recycled plastic. Oh. So if you're buying pad, they might feel really soft and look lovely, but they're plastic. So that's why I don't use fabrics like that. All my fabrics are, are pure cotton. Yeah, yeah. Might be a bit, so tic- you've got that. bit tickly as well if it's quite fun. <laughs> yeah. I know. You kind of look at these and go, ooh, really? Yeah. Nice, so, uh, nice for 10 seconds and then a bit sweaty. <laughs> yeah yeah but also it's that if you're transitioning from using a, an internal like a cup to pads they are really different they do feel different your flows coming out which you may not be used to your, your pad does get a bit sticky <laughs> depending what your flow is like yeah. you know? so it's it's about i think just keep going keep trying and feel the difference get to know what's going on in your body I mean I'm really encourage women to really listen to their bodies and you know how do different products feel um and lots of people ask me questions about cups and pads and sponges and and you know it's great there's so much choice out there okay I'm really pro-choice for women you know you go in a normal supermarket the amount of tampons and pads on it's I don't know how women choose because I couldn't um but it's about going with what feels right for you but it you know it's like the first time I tried a moon cup I hated it I kind of persevered with it and it never ever felt comfortable and I kind of wondered if maybe that's because I've had kids and I've had stitches and all that kind of thing as I've got older I still try them because I get sent samples and I go, oh, I'll try this one, see if it feels different. Yeah. And they never have for me. They've always kind of felt uncomfortable. I can feel it. I can always feel it inside me. Um, I get cramps from using them. Occasionally I'll use it if I really want to collect my blood to do something special, but I won't ever use it for very long. Yeah. 
but that's me you know i know other women who feel, you know can't feel them at all so they're really comfy they love them you know it, it's everyone's individual choice um I, mean, I don't know how you feel about using sort of cups and pads i mean there, there's this whole other cultural thing isn't it of like hi- hiding our blood totally and when and when i saw that question i could feel like you know there's even though women collectively we're waking up to our menstruation and it's no longer something we don't talk about it's we're talking about it with each other's more and more red tents and moon lodges are popping up but i still feel this um collective taboo and shame around our blood and the fact that it has to be hidden away and the fact that somehow it's dirty has been going on for generations and generations and generations so you know transitioning from a moon cup to a cloth pad is is gonna bring us up against our edges of that conditioning and the simple act of being able to touch our blood and have to handle it again because we have to see it we have to handle it we have to wash our pads um, is is actually going to push our edge of that a little bit and if we go through it it's going to pop this invisible bubble of conditioning so whilst okay it might feel different but it's for me it's it's very important that we uh, can try them at least and get used to being able to touch and see our blood so that it's no longer hidden away and I think when we change that on a, a personal level we we change we help change it collectively so you know i know we've got the the physical element of okay it feels different and yeah i've bacterial infection from a cloth pad at all um you know it's it's possible that it feels uncomfortable say if it's left in too long because we still have to change our cloth pads cloth pads as much as say a tampon or a moon cup or else they are going to feel a little bit comfortable at the end of the day if we just got one in all day. But um, yeah, for me, I've I've never I've never had a bacterial infection at all from the cloth pads, just like thick knickers. So, um, like you say, I would suggest it's some other factor, like maybe the washing powder or something. But yeah, from from my perspective, to sum it up, if you're watching this video, I really encourage every woman to touch the blood. There's information in it. It'll pop an invisible taboo and it will help our collective consciousness evolve and, and bring it out into the open, this sacredness, the magic of menstruation. So, yeah, that's that's my take on this question. Yeah, yeah. I've had some um, quite powerful experiences recently because I'm in perimenopause. So each bleed, I'm like, is this going to be my last one? Oh. You know? <laughs> really, really going so much deeper into my whole cycle really just because I know that at some point it's going to end and I've the last few months I've taken the time to actually bleed on the earth Mm. which has blown my mind actually and it's almost like you become the earth you know I mean we do lots of me and you probably people who listen to you I do lots of visualizations of kind of my womb connecting with the earth feeling my roots going down it that was like my blood going into the earth was like they were my roots that blood trickling became my roots and it was just mind-blowing so i'd be saying to everyone never mind pouring your blood on your plants get your yoni on the earth yeah (laughs) forget the cup forget the pads just bleed on the earth don it on your forehead (laughs) have it on your altar Yeah, totally. I mean, actually, last month I did. I used a cup. I collected some of my blood. I painted it on my drum. I made myself a really beautiful menopause belt. I painted it on there. I was like, what else can I paint? <laughs> Anyone who's standing still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it's it, it, it. This is our. This is our spiritual path. This is our. It excites me so much. Kind of speaking to women like yourself who get it and get the power of our cycle and the power of our blood and you know it's not just to be flushed down the toilet it's like you use it with intention you know we've got so much capacity here to change the world and like you're saying it's like breaking that taboo when you said that just popping that bubble i got goosebumps because that is that's what this works about is 
breaking down those barriers, breaking down that taboo of our blood being dirty or or even, you know, kind of causing infections or scary for some way. It's just scary, isn't it? Because blood is associated with pain and death and cutting yourself, all those things. And, and this blood is the blood of life. Yeah. You know, so if, you know, we can really begin to work with it, honour it, not be scared of it, not be scared to talk about it, not worry that we're going to get infections from using more natural products because ultimately you know i think there will be a kickback and it'll come from you know the consciousness because i mean there was a there was an article going around facebook recently that was i didn't it was in a different language but it was basically saying moon cups and pads were not good for you yeah. and i was just like well of course we're threatening those big companies not in a very big way <laughs> Because, you know, all the people who make these products, we're all still small businesses, but women are waking up, you know, and I do, I, I listen to your podcast, Melanie, and I just get so excited when you talk about how many women are listening, because we're creating change. Yeah. All those women connecting to their cycles and connecting to their blood is going to, we, we're creating a revolution, aren't we? absolutely <laughs> feels awesome and and reminding you know that you saying that has reminded me there's listeners in japan there's listeners in saudi arabia particularly in countries where women are more restricted and to those women where you're more restricted touch your blood it's magic something magical happens and it might feel weird it might be just you on your own in the bathroom going well those two women who are funny women, I don't know, they, they wear red and one looks like she lives in a caravan, and <laughs> which you do, I think. And they bleed on the earth and they touch their blood and they seem happy. Well, let's just put the happiness word on pause, but it's just living, living and thriving. Um, and touching our blood can break taboos that just... We just can't imagine the benefits and if we all were able to touch our blood then something something profound will happen so when when i see questions like this and i really appreciate you sharing this with me rachel i oh when you contacted me like to do this i was like yes let's let's do it and let's get the information out there because it's so so important for our it's not only our well-being. There's no freaking way you get a bacterial infection from wearing cotton pads. Um, it's probably left in too long, or it's the the washing powder or something. But yeah, it's just it's just awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And for me as well, you talking about all these women listening and women in countries where you know this stuff isn't talked about. Once you start feeling comfortable with it, it's talking to your daughters, and that's the next generation. I mean, I hear I'm getting I get mums emailing me about their daughters have started bleeding, and they don't want to talk about it. They don't want anyone to know all that, and it's kind of like you know that this is what the work we're doing is opening the conversation. So women talk about it, and then women talking about it will spread to the girls talking about it, and I you know I'm really hoping for the next generation coming up. Yeah things will be really different yeah women feel so differently about this stuff yeah. hopefully yeah. hopefully we will and we'll be hopefully in less pain yeah because yeah. those those products the plastic products the ones that are bleached they're going to leak toxins into our yoni and yeah that's that's causing all sorts of problems so yeah i hope i hope this has a wave effect there's lots of women yeah. touching their blood. If you do touch your blood and you feel um, like sharing that you've just done it or the effects, then please do post in the Sacred Room private Facebook group, Rachel, with others, and we will respond. Um, so really... Cheering. <laughs> <laughs> I want a little emoji where there's like a, a cheerleader, but with blood on her hands, like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That would be great. That would be great. Yeah. So just to summarise, Rachel, your your answer to this question is there's just no way that cloth pads are going to actually cause any infection, but it might be something like it's been left in too long or tight jeans all day or it's the washing powder and, and that's 
or dietary and that's what's caused an infection or they had it already <laughs> yeah yeah just thought of that one yeah yeah, yeah. that's a good point because uh stuff's revealed during our moon time isn't it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay smelling me I right. hope I hope that's cleared that up for everybody watching. And if you do want to try cloth pads, you're not at all put off and and do feel encouraged and supported to make that choice. Yeah. OK, anything you'd like to add, Rachel? No, I just, you know, it's been a great little chat and hopefully cleared up quite a few things. And as someone who's been using pads for over 20 years cloth yeah. pads for over 20 years i've never had an infection so yeah. it baffled me this question but i'm glad it's great to talk it over with someone else and yeah. you know have that insight from two people so yeah. now it pops it great. and it takes it out to the world which is great yeah, exactly um thank you very much for taking your time to do this from your um welsh wildness <laughs> <laughs> Well, what a great podcast. Thanks again to Rachel. And just to sum up, my little challenge for you is to touch your menstrual blood and report back in in the Sacred Room private Facebook group. It is a safe space. There are over 800 women in there sharing things that they wouldn't share anywhere else. And it's helpful. It's helpful to pop these taboos. If you're not already a member, there's a link in the description below to the blog post on my website. And in that blog post is a link to join the Facebook group. It is private, so nobody can see what you post. If you don't want to do that, just touch your menstrual blood and see what happens. Test it. Test if I'm kind of saying stuff that's just BS. Um, I really encourage you, test this stuff, pull it apart, use it for yourself. Um, that's the only way we're going to get empowered through our menstrual cycle anyway. So I look forward to hearing from you if you wish. And uh, I'll see you next time on the podcast. Hope it was useful. <laughs>